This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time now is 427 on your Wednesday morning. We want to thank you for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrett. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Lord Casey is on vacation today. We begin with a health alert on this Wednesday. The Marion County Health Department reporting the first flu-related death of the season. Yeah, state health officials are urging that you and your family members get a flu shot immediately. Last year, 110 people statewide died because of the flu-related illnesses. No information has been released about the latest victim in terms of age or if they had another illness, anything like that. So we don't know any of that information, but it just serves as a warning that these flu shots are critical. And that's why the Centers for Disease Control suggests that, of course, everyone age six months and older should get a flu vaccine each year if you can. Flu season runs from October through May. Contact your local county health department for information about any upcoming vaccination clinics. All right, and we are bringing Alyssa Donovan in here. We are going to have a pretty nice day today. Yes, it's going to be beautiful today. Seasonal temperatures. We are starting a little cool this morning, though, so you are going to want a light jacket as you step outside. Those temperatures across the area in the 30s this morning are right around 39 degrees in Indianapolis, so you'll definitely notice that this morning. But we are going to warm quickly right into those seasonal averages. 65 degrees for the high. The good news is we're going to see plenty of sunshine today. We saw a little bit of gloom yesterday yesterday, some peaks of sunshine by the afternoon, but we're going to see more sunshine today, which will help us warm up quicker. We're still going to see that breeze out there, so it might be a little bit brisk at times, but for the most part, we're going to see a really beautiful fall day on top. You promise, so you and Todd delivered, which is a good uh, thing. Yeah, we promise. All right, very good. <laughs> so this is a new crime prevention plan, putting more electronic eyes on the issue of crime. Yeah, the mayor and Metro Police Chief will be unveiling something called B-Link. It stands for Business Link, and it will connect IMPD with security camera systems owned by residents and businesses. This is going to be so helpful, Raphael. And more cameras for police. The footage will be used to help police on investigations, calls to service. Uh, police are currently testing the system with several businesses, including Goodwill of Central Indiana and Southern Indiana. We'll have much more on this story today. There's a news conference at 11, so we'll get more details on this program. Yeah, and sometimes that video clip is the missing link that they need in order to, to solve, solve a crime. Yeah. So hopefully this will help a lot. Well, we have a big day here. Are you ready to hear Boom Baby? The Pacers home opener is today. They're back. Fans are excited for a new season for the blue and gold. Several new players have joined the squad. And of course, everyone is waiting to see the return of Victor Oladipo. We're going to be live at Bankers Life Fieldhouse later this morning. And you'll also meet a woman with a special connection to the team. So this will be a great morning celebrating the new NBA season. We've got that plus much more coming up here to start your Wednesday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 4.30 on Good Morning Indiana, a mountain of trash is causing problems at a southeast side apartment complex. The concerns residents have about the growing pile of garbage. Also on this Wednesday, the Archdiocese of Indianapolis and Ron Colley High School are now facing a federal discrimination lawsuit. The claims being made now by a former guidance counselor. And Indianapolis college students are traveling the country to learn about civil rights, how they're using those lessons to improve social justice in our own community. 4.30 on your Wednesday morning. Thanks for starting the day with us. I'm Meredith Barron. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Our friend Lauren Casey's on vacation. It is midweek on a pay week. What else could you want? <laughs> Go Pacers. Hey! hey. <laughs> Go Pacers indeed. And we have a great forecast today. As we head out today, it's going to be cold this morning. Okay. But the good news is we are going to warm up. We promised you that, Rafael, yesterday. <laughs> and we are delivering today. You deliver. Okay. It's still going to be breezy outside, but a cool start. Temperatures in the 30s at many locations. Right now, 39 degrees in Indianapolis, 37 in Crawfordsville, 40 in Tipton. So we are going to see a few spots drop off yet this morning because we do have those clear skies and we have high pressure in control. But we are going to warm quickly today as we are under this southwesterly flow that's helping bring in a little bit of warmer air. It's still going to be breezy today, though, but it won't be as chilly as what we saw yesterday. So by 8 a.m., those temperatures will be in the 30s at most locations as you head out the door. By the noon hour, we'll hit the mid-50s. And then we'll climb into the mid-60s by the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine throughout the day. That high pressure is in control. We do have some chances of rain as we head through the seven-day forecast. But today, we do not have any chances. It's going to be a beautiful and dry.
today. Temperatures climbing into the mid 60s with plenty of sunshine. Alyssa, thank you. As you're heading out this morning for work or school, we are taking a live look at I-465 at I-70 on the east side. Just a few cars out there to get your Wednesday morning started. We're going to take a turn now to I-465 at White River. You can see some flashing lights there. There is some construction taking place in that area, so just be aware of that. No issues to report otherwise. At 432, we begin this morning with this pile of trash that people are waking up to this morning on the South City Southeast side. RTV6 is working to get answers about this very situation. As you can see, trash is piled up so high that you can't even see the dumpster. It's somewhere behind all of that. A tenant at the Valley Ridge apartment says sometimes the problem gets so bad that vehicles cannot even get around the garbage. We learned about this issue after the leasing company closed for the day, but we'll be asking questions and hope to get a resolution for renters very soon on this very big issue there. The Archdiocese of Indianapolis and Ron Colley High School are now facing a federal lawsuit. This after former guidance counselor Shelley Fitzgerald sued, accusing the school and church of wrongfully and unlawfully discriminating against her. Fitzgerald was placed on administrative leave, banned from campus and fired after school officials found out she is married to a woman, which is against Catholic teachings. You can read more about the suit and the Archdiocese response by going to the RTV6 app and clicking on this story. A dear school superintendent will lead a school district facing criticism over the handling of a sexual misconduct claim. The Northwest Hendricks School Board approved a temporary contract for Scott Cyferson. Uh, the board will start the search for a permanent superintendent at the beginning of next year. Dr. Cyverson takes over for Mike Springer, who, as you may recall, resigned earlier this month. Uh, Springer did not give a reason for stepping down, but his decision came amid an in criminal investigation into Tri-West football coach Tyler Bruce. Bruce accused of sexual misconduct with a student, which Bruce denies those allegations. A Springer wanted to fire him, but the school board rejected that recommendation. A development company says it plans to take legal action in a growing battle over property on the west side of Indianapolis. Last month, Ambrose Property Group announced intentions to sell the former GM stamping plant after backing out of a plan to redevelop the 103-acre site. Shortly after that, the city said it planned to use eminent domain to take control of the land. In a statement, Ambrose says the threat has prevented the company from selling the property, costing it between $65 and $100 million. The city released a response saying the two sides are set to meet today to talk about the future of the site. Some people came out and they cut some of the branches down off the trees in front of the house here. Then they picked the trash up and they picked the trash up out in back. Let's talk results this morning on Good Morning Indiana. A homeowner who lives on Tuxedo Street on the east side says that someone cleaned up a vacant home next door just after RTV6 got involved. Uh, Scott Harvey and Donna George first told us about the problem home last week. They were concerned about overgrown trees and garbage littering the lawn. Harvey says the work happened on Monday after RTV6 took issues, those issues to the city on the couple's behalf. He hopes the work does not stop there. You can walk around and look. There's holes all in the foundation. All the windows are knocked out. They've got mattresses up in the windows. You know, it's just, it's not safe. Last week, the city told RTV6 the home is in process of being sold with a proposal to get it fixed. Some students and faculty members at Butler University are learning about our country's past, hoping to make a better future for everyone. They're part of the Desmond Tutu Peace Lab, which focuses on creating a dialogue and advocacy work around social justice issues. This year, the group took a trip to Alabama to visit several significant civil rights sites centered around the violence African Americans faced and the impact it still has today. Now they're hoping to share with our community what they have learned. I think that if we don't talk about it, it only continues the pain. Um, there, there's never been any sort of reparations. The least we can do is talk about it. They currently work with the Martin Luther King Center in town to get their mission out to more people. You can learn more about their work in this story on the RTV6 News app. Now the Pacers tip off a brand new season tonight, which includes several new players. It's opening night at home against the Detroit Pistons. The team started the month of October with that trip to India. As you may recall, they've come back and continued to work hard in the last two weeks of preseason action. So far, this new season with a new look and a roster scoring a bunch of points 
Giants. They'll have three new starters in the lineup this evening while waiting on the return of Victor Oladipo. The team is setting its goals even higher for 2020 after losing in the first round of the playoffs last spring. Once we kind of start to learn each other a little bit more, everything else will kind of just take care of itself. I mean, obviously, you can point to this and that, but I think once we start playing together, get the ball rolling, we'll know what the true challenges are. Enough. We're still trying to gel, but we had a great time in India. Um, I think some guys were dreading it at first, but we, we came out of that um, a closer group. We had a lot of fun together, played a lot of games on the planes together, and just got to know each other. And uh, it's, it's new, it's fresh, but I think we all kind of like it. And we are getting ready to cheer. Go Pacers. Boom, baby, on this Wednesday. Our sports team will have full coverage of the Pacers season opener. Our sports director day first will be live out courtside at Bankers Life Fieldhouse starting on the news at 5. Then on the news at 6, Brad Brown takes a look at the big changes to the Pacers roster. Highlights and a game recap at 11. That's all tonight right here. Where? on RTV6. An explosive testimony given by the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine over the impeachment inquiry. Coming up why the president says it is all hearsay. Also still to come on Good Morning Indiana, a recall has been issued for thousands of gun holsters. Still ahead, why the product is causing major safety concerns. But first, let's check in with Alyssa Donovan and your forecast. And we are starting cool this morning. Temperatures in the 30s across central Indiana, but we are warming up quickly. We'll see seasonal highs, a little breezy as well. We do have rain coming up in the forecast. I'll have those details in just a few minutes. Just refined Atlas SE with technology. Welcome back. Time now is 441 and we are taking a live look at I-65 at 30th Street. You can see some construction barrels up in that area, so that is something to be aware of if you are traveling that way this morning. Otherwise, no issues to report. All right now, we're taking a look at some stories making national headlines at this hour. In Northern California, hundreds of thousands of people could be left in the dark once again. Pacific Gas and Electric says the return of dangerous fire weather could prompt them to shut off the power across 16 counties. Counties. Meanwhile, firefighters in Southern California, as you can see, have been working to contain two separate wildfires before strong winds arrive in that area once again. Congressman Elijah Cummings will lie in repose today at Morgan State University, a historically black research university in Maryland, where he served on the Board of Regents. After the viewing, there will be a community-wide celebration to honor him. Uh, Cummings, as you may recall, died last week at the age of 68. He will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol tomorrow. This morning, Democrats are calling it the most damaging testimony yet in the impeachment inquiry. Bill Taylor, the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, telling Congress he believed it was, quote, crazy to withhold aid to the Ukraine until the country's officials agreed to an open and to open an investigation into the 2016 election and the Biden family. Here's ABC's Inez de Lucatera. Beyond me. Uh, Overnight, I, I Vice should, President Pence insisting there was no quid pro quo when President Trump asked the leader of Ukraine to investigate his political opponents. The American people can read the transcript of the phone call the president had with President Zelensky, and they will see there was no quid pro quo. But the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, telling a different story during his testimony before Congress. In my 10 short months in Congress, it's not even noon, right? And this is the my most disturbing day in Congress so far. Democrats in the room say there were audible gasps as Taylor detailed the White House pressure campaign on Ukraine. Taylor says he was given no official reason for why millions of dollars in foreign aid was held up, but that U.S. ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, told him Trump wanted the Ukrainian president to announce a public investigation into his Democratic rivals, writing in his opening statement, Ambassador Sondland said everything was dependent on such an announcement, including security assistance. He said that President Trump wanted President Zelensky in a public box by making a public statement about ordering such investigations, adding that the president told Sondland the Ukrainian president had to clear things up and do it in public. And if he didn't, Trump said they would be at a stalemate. The White House now calling Taylor's testimony a triple hearsay, with some of the president's biggest supporters still standing by him and blasting the impeachment probe. This is fundamentally un-American, and until it changes, I will fight back as hard as I can. 
And later today, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Laura Cooper is expected to testify. And as Delacuatera, ABC News, Washington. The time now is 444. Obamacare health insurance premiums, they're projected to drop in most states next year. The Affordable Care Act premiums are dropping an average of 4% in 38 states and 20 more insurers are joining the program. Now, this is the second year that the rates have been lowered. Healthcare experts say the system is stronger because insurers have raised rates enough to make the exchange profitable. 47 state attorneys, attorney generals, including Indiana's Curtis Hill, are now investigating Facebook for potential antitrust violations. The probe, originally started by New York Attorney General Letitia James, has quickly grown since September. James says all of the states involved are concerned Facebook may have put consumer information at risk. They are also investigating whether the social media company increased the price of advertising. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is set to testify in Congress later today. Actress Lori Laughlin and her husband are facing new charges this morning in that college admission scandal. The charges come from a grand jury in Massachusetts. They're among nine other parents also being charged with conspiracy to commit federal program bribery. The charges were added because of all the institutions involved receive federal assistance. Arraignment dates have not been scheduled. The charge carries a penalty of up to 10 years in prison. If you are a gun owner, we have a recall you need to be aware of. More than 3,000 gun holsters are being recalled because it can cause the gun to fire unexpectedly. The U.S. Product Safety Commission issued a fast track recall for federal cartridge Black Hawk T Series L2C gun holsters. Its design can move the safety switch on the gun without the user's knowledge, causing the safety concern. The holsters have been sold at Bass Pro Shops and other sporting goods stores. If you have the holster, you should stop using it immediately and contact Blackhawk at the number on your screen for a full refund. Here at 446, we want to get a check at the weather. We're getting a midweek treat here, Alyssa. Yes, we are. It's going to be a beautiful seasonal day, a great fall day to get outside. The only thing is still a little breezy, so it might feel brisk at times, but for the most part, it's going to be a great day. We do have the potential of rain as we head into this weekend. We could see some of that late Thursday night as well, but the bulk of of that system is going to move in over the weekend. Temperatures starting a little cool this morning in the 30s here in Indianapolis, 40s in Kokomo and Bloomington. You can see we have clear skies. That's helping cool us down and we have those southwesterly winds, which is actually going to help warm us up throughout the day. We have clear skies. High pressure is in control right now and that's going to continue throughout our Wednesday. Temperatures will fall a few degrees yet this morning, likely going to be into the upper 30s as you head out the door and then by the noon hour, we are warming quickly into the mid 50s with that sunshine in control today before we climb into the low 60s this afternoon. That's right where we should be this time of year. The only thing with today, a little bit breezy outside. We're going to see those sustained winds up to 15 miles per hour out of the southwest and then those gusts will be up to 25, possibly even 30 miles per hour this afternoon. So still a little gusty out there and that is due to that strong pressure gradient that's still in control just to the north of us. That's going to continue to push out today. As it does, we'll see high pressure continue to build in. That's going to be our controlling factor today and much of tomorrow. But we do have a system just to our north. This cold front is going to slide through overnight. What that will do is only bring us a little bit of cloud coverage to start our Thursday. By Thursday evening, that's going to be our better chance of some showers as we have this system moving up from the south. Likely just going to see some light showers, though, from that. Another system moves in this weekend. That will bring us the potential of showers Saturday and Sunday. Just a slight chance at this point, but we could see up to an inch of rainfall over the weekend as this system moves through. That's also going to take our temperatures back to average 60s Saturday and Sunday. So if we do have some gaps in that system, it's going to be a great one to get outside at times. We're just going to have to keep an eye on that timing of that forecast. Today, starting a little cool and sunny. We're going to stay clear throughout the day. Still breezy outside, hitting the mid 50s by the noon hour low 60s this afternoon. So a great day today. And then we just have a little bit of dicey conditions as we head into the weekend. Again, those chances of showers come in late Thursday night, possibly lingering into Friday. And then that other system comes in over the weekend, bringing us a small chance of showers both Saturday and Sunday. Alyssa, thank you so much. Now we check a look at your traffic now weather 
not your weather, but your traffic system. You just did weather, I'll do traffic. Our in-dot camera at I-465 at West 71st Street. As you can see, traffic is fantastic this time of day. There are no major problems to report on your morning commute. Macy's says it will stop selling real fur by early 2021. The decision applies to Macy's stores as well as Bloomingdale's locations. Macy's admits the move was influenced by animal rights advocates, but also says consumers are moving away from purchasing real fur. The company says it will continue to sell clothes with faux fur. The U.S. Postal Service has unveiled 18 new forever stamps. The 2020 stamps honoring trailblazing journalist Gwen Ifill and legendary golfer Arnold Palmer. Ifill stamp is the 43rd in the Black Heritage series. They're also releasing four new stamps honoring hip hop with graffiti art, rap, DJs, and even breakdancing. Other stamp designs include celebrations of women's suffrage, Earth Day, and much more. Miller Lite is offering free beer in a new social media campaign. After the break, how you can get your hands on a cold one. And residents of a west side apartment complex, they're worried about their health and safety. New at 5, the gross conditions raisings, raising their concern. But first, let's check in with Court TV. I'm Vinny Politan. Today on Court TV, the case of Wisconsin versus Ezra McCandless. She's been charged in the death of the man she was cheating with on her boyfriend. Well, today in court, we expect that boyfriend to take the stand being called by the prosecution. We are live in Wisconsin today on Court TV. Don't forget, you can watch the all new Court TV live on your mobile device by visiting courttv.com. We'll be right back. One cup at a time. Uh, time to check your commute this morning and good morning to our friends in Canby, Gas City and Peru. A live look at our in-dot camera at I-70 at Sherman Drive. As you can see, all is looking fantastic this morning. No major problems to report on the interstate system. It is Wednesday. It is, what, 39 degrees at Indianapolis. It's going to get much warmer. Your forecast is coming up in just a few moments. So Miller Coors wants to give you, just you, right? Just you at home, a free Miller Lite. But to get yours, but? there's always a catch. They want you to unfollow the brand what? on social media first. It's all part of a new campaign debuting during the World Series to encourage people to get out more. Miller Coors says it got the idea after learning half of all drinkers ages 21 to 27 meet with their friends less than a few times a month. To get the free beer, you have to take a photo proving you unfollowed Miller Lite on Facebook or Instagram, then text it to the company. You'll upload a receipt and Miller will credit your PayPal account for the cost of a beer. The deal is good until no November 29th or until 118,000 beers have been handed out. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It's been 18 years since Apple changed the way that the world listened to and bought music. On this day in 2001, Apple introduced the first iPod, making today National iPod Day. The first one sold for $399. Apple later developed the smaller iPod, the Shuffle, the Nano, and the iPod Touch. With smartphones, many people have moved on from the device, but it introduced us to playlists, podcasts, books, and so much more. I still have my iPod. So do I. And I remember I probably was maybe a sophomore in high school when I got mine, and I felt so cool. <laughs> when I, I finally was, got the, it. The really big brick one oh. that could play video. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at and her. And you both are so up. cool. So it's going to be a cool day out there today. So yes, cool start today. We are starting in the 30s this morning. You're going to need a jacket as you head outside, but you will be able to ditch it by the afternoon. We'll see those highs into the mid. 60s, plenty of sunshine. A little breezy out there, though. We're still seeing those gusts up to 35 miles per hour at times. Tomorrow, a little bit less sunshine, still in the 60s. And then we do have some chances of showers Friday, Saturday, and into the weekend. Then we are back with sunny skies to start next week.